Hallelujah. Amen. Are you, are you ready for the word? Yes. Uh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's amazing when, when the Lord speaks sometimes, or not sometimes, but so often while I'm speaking to you, I get revelation. And um, I, as soon as it comes, the teachings are available on YouTube just a little bit later on a Sunday afternoon. So if you want to go on YouTube and watch it again, um, it's for me a blessing to watch my own things. And uh, I have to, I really have to hold the criticizer back and, and, and just know that it was God speaking and um, he, will, he will minister to everybody as it should be. Amen. Um, after, we, we're not going to have an official close today, like we, I won't close officially. We're going to, just after I've ministered the word, I want it, uh, the Lord placed on my heart that we're going to pray for Actually, for everybody, but if you have to leave quickly or you don't need prayer, that you're welcome to uh, to leave afterwards. But we'll, uh, after I've minister, we'll just move again into just a, a little bit of worship, but not worship. But we just we're gonna ask the worship team, uh, not the worship team, the some of the um, um, leadership and be, uh, Pastor Bates and Vilti to also come and pray. So we're going to be a few people praying. And so whatever is on your heart, we're going to let the Holy Spirit minister to you. You know that with, I've got to be honest with you, without the Holy Spirit, m- m- you won't see me here. You won't see me here. I, I won't be here. I will not be present. <laughs> he has to empower me. The Holy Spirit has to empower me to be here and to minister to you. So all the glory be to him for whatever he ministers because uh, we need his power. You know, uh, a Christian life without the power of the Holy Ghost is, is impossible. You can't live Christianity without the Holy Spirit. You can't. And that is why Jesus, when he said, you, you have to, I'm going to leave you. It's better for me to leave you and to send the helper, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. Because, it's, it's, it, because the Holy Spirit can be with every one of us, and he is with every one of us, present all the time. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He never turns his back on you. He's always there to help us and to counsel us and to be an advocate to us. And so, so when we make the Holy Spirit our friend, it changes your life. It changes Christianity. And so many times people wonder why Christians look like Christians or sometimes smell like the world. Um, it is the, I, I do believe it's, in a sense, absence of being in relationship with Jesus. Because once you've tasted the goodness of God, it changes your life. It really changes your life. Uh, it's not about coming together and doing church. It's about knowing Jesus because, and knowing the Father. Know who your real Father is because the Father, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, has paid a significant price. He paid a price to get you close to Him and for you to know Him. It's amazing. You, you didn't pay the price. None of you died. You all are here, present today. Praise Jesus for that. And because of Him, you can be here and you can know the Father every day. You can know Him a bit more and a bit better and live in His kingdom. Amen. I want to I wanna quickly I wanna throw a question at you this morning. I want to ask you, uh, do you deserve God's approval? Do you deserve God's kindness? Do you deserve God's blessing? Do you deserve God's favor or healing? Do you deserve it or not? Do you deserve it or not? Uh, the answer is, uh, before you answer, this is actually one of those things that you don't answer loud, because it's, uh, a, a yes, I mean, um, the answer is it depends on how you look at it. It depends on how you look at it. And uh, I see I got all your attention here this morning, I mean. So it depends on how you look at it, because there's two components in, in how we live our Christian life. As soon as you got born again, in John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Jesus spoke about uh, to Nicodemus, and he said, you've got to be reborn. You've got to be reborn. And the word reborn actually means that you are re-being, you're being rebirthed from above. You are being rebirthed. It's a new creation. That is why uh, in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it says that the old person is gone, the new has come. So I want to ask you, how many of you, uh, as um, little hair, um, or a lot of hair, you're, when you got reborn, when you got redeemed by the blood of Jesus, how many of your hair did increase? 
Anybody's hair decreased? Nobody. Okay. So in other words, there's a very important thing that I want to teach you this morning or that the Holy Spirit wants to teach us, and it's actually how to live the Christian life. Because once the moment that you've given your life to Jesus, the Bible says that all things has become new. All, the all things gone, all things has become new. And a lot of people assess that by the physical and not by the spiritual sense. And so I want to speak to you in a sense about uh, your spirit and your soul and your body this morning. I did put it on a board and my wife said, please remove. And I did make some uh, drawings and the, the, it didn't go well. So I left it. And so I really want to encourage you is I'm going to just use this as illustration. We've got, we got a spirit man, which is a reborn man from God. And I know many of you know this, but I really want to ask you to listen again and to just let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. So you've got a a, a reborn spirit man, which was separated from God at uh, at the beginning in Genesis, where Adam uh, and Eve sinned. They died. It it didn't mean they ceased to exist. God has regenerated that spirit. And that is why the Bible says that the Holy Spirit has regenerated your spirit and that you are a new man in Christ. You are now inside of Jesus, and then you have your soul, which is your emotions, your intellect, and everything that you feel and think, and then you have your body, the one that's moving around with you. And so when, when in, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, when you become a new man, it is your, your body didn't change. When you got redeemed by Jesus, your body didn't change. Those of you <laughs> okay, who were short are still short. <laughs> Those who are long are still long. And so what we do is, and, and your mind, you've got your soul, and you're still thinking the same things that the old man was thinking, the old person before you got saved. Does this make sense to you? So you have the same thought pattern as before. But in your spirit, it's become brand, brand new. And in 1 John 4, 17, it says that you are identical. As he is, so am I in this world. What is he talking about? Not your body, not your, mu- not your mind, and not, but it's in your spirit, man, that you've become identical to Christ. And that is why if the Bible talks about that you are holy, you have, you have inherited Jesus' holiness, you have inherited Jesus' righteousness, because he became sin, so you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And all these things has happened in your spirit, man. And so that, this is very important for you to get this because a lot of people get confused. They, they, walk, they get reborn and they walk with their old thoughts, old thought patterns, and they have not renewed their minds to the new man who they are in Christ. And so they walk around with the old thoughts. And when somebody upsets you, you the same words come out. The same language, the same sign language, and that is not, you know, you know what I'm saying. So the same things pops out, and you think that you're still the old person. So why did I, what, what's happening? I thought I'm new, but I'm not new. No, you are new. It's just you have not renewed your mind, as Romans chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 2 says, it says, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be trans, transformed. So transformation only happens by the renewal of your mind. I'm going to say that again. Transformation happens only by the renewal of your mind. Is when you transform your mind and let the Word of God speak to your mind, uh, 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 put it in your heart, read the Word of God, and see, because it's only by the Word of God you can see who you are in the Spirit, who the new man is. And I'm going to just give you a few illustrations here. And that is why so many people don't understand how to apply the word in their lives. Because in Ephesians, it says that God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And then you're like, oh no, but my bank account, it's like there's no money. Oh, but my health, if I've got all spiritual blessings, why am I feeling sick? Does this make sense? And so what we do is because we experience something in the body, 
we want to question, do I have really something in the spirit? But in the spirit, you cannot feel the spirit, man. You cannot, you can never feel, you cannot feel it. You can feel the anointing. The anointing of God is tangible. So you can feel the anointing when the anointing flows. You experience it. You can feel goosebumps. You can feel happy. You can feel joy. Uh, ach, same thing. You can feel sad. And that is, that is expressions of what has happened in the spirit right now. And so what the Bible says, we, don't, we, we do not live in the, uh, like we, uh, the transformation happens when you transform your mind so that you can live by the spirit, man, and who you are in the spirit. And then when you are living and focusing on the spirit, man, then you start to access and draw what is in the spirit. Everybody with me? And so, so this is important. That is why the Bible says those who are carnally minded, it produces death. Those who are spiritually minded, it produces life. And so it's very important. Carnally minded doesn't say there's something wrong with you. It just says that you are focused on the five senses. If the doctor tells you you're sick, then you declare with your mouth, for example, no, the doctor says I'm sick. But what does the other report say? The other report says in, in uh, Peter, 1 Peter 2.24, it says that by his stripes you are healed. And you are blessed. If I ask you, uh, if I come to you today and I ask, how are you doing? No, uh, it's going well, but my finances are this. But the exa- immediately we want to move to the carnal circumstances and we want to declare that's who I am. So our identity becomes confused because we don't actually uh, put these things separate. We are one, but we need to separate them to understand how the thing is actually, how we are actually put together because it's amazing how God put you together. And so that is why in Philemon, I've used this so many uh, times, Philemon 1 verse 6, it says that your faith may become effectual by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is within you. I wonder how many of us are walking around and saying, hey, I'm looking terrible today, I'm feeling terrible, I'm feeling like this, I'm, I'm looking like this. And it says that your faith may become effectual, it means that your faith may be, may be activated by you acknowledging every good thing that is within you, your spirit man. And so your spirit man, you cannot move, you cannot, you cannot acknowledge it by a feeling, you cannot acknowledge it by an emotion. Because it's only by your body and your, your mind that you feel the emotions. And so that is why you cannot go by what you feel. You have to go by what the Word of God says. And once you start to, to live, start to move and understand this concept, you start to fight your life differently because God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And, and it is so important. I want to read this actually to you, but it is in it's in Second Peter verse, um, 1 verse 2 to 5. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus. According to His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Interesting. So if God has given me so many things, why do I not experience those things? That is the question. It is because what happens to us is we are focused so many times, carnally minded. And so we neglect the things of the Spirit. We neglect the Word of God. We neglect neglect that because I don't feel. If I don't feel well, if I don't feel this way, if I don't feel, then that's how I feel. And that's who I am or that's who I think I am. And it's the same thing as I've been previously, I've been an introvert like, um, like a very high standard. If you come and visit me, like I said, I'll leave you outside. You can knock. You can stay outside. I'm inside. I'm happy. Happy days. And so that's how that's how I function. Space, mine. This is my cubicle. And so when the Lord came, and the one day I was at a very, very low point, and I asked the Lord to show me how much He loves me and give me a revelation of His love for me, and that changed me from within. And so God works with us from within, out. We are so many times waiting for God to, 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 with His power to slap you to actually go and pray for someone. We are waiting for that moment. No, 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 no. don't wait for a moment. It's in you. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is on the inside of you, and that He that is within you is greater than he that is within the world. 
And I say to so many people, it's, it's, if you are afraid of the devil, it's because you don't know who's in you. Because the Bible says that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. And so in other words, it's if you constantly think of the word and what the word says about you, you'll live, start to manifest the fruits of the spirit. And when you constantly think feelings, emotions, feelings, emotions, it's not, there's nothing wrong with them. Please don't, un- don't misunderstand me. When you feel sad, I also have my days. But we, in that moment, we've got to choose. You have always that moment of choice. I'm going to choose that I'm going to live by the word. I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to say what the word says. If he says that I'm redeemed, if he says that I'm clean, if I just, if I just, if, if some of those nice um, vehicles drive in front of you, um, and, and the flesh wants to manifest, or actually it did manifest, and the sign language just came out. And then in that moment, you feel so bad that you don't want to even tell somebody that Jesus loves them. And that is why the enemy will, will always try to, and that is what the difference is between the law, or between law and grace. Because law always puts the emphasis on your body and you, how you focus and what you think and that you've got to perform. You've got to be this good Christian. That is why if somebody tells me, yeah, that guy's a good Christian, I'm like, how do you define that? What about the rest? The Bible says in Romans 3.23, it says, we all fallen short of the glory standard, of God's glorious standard. So we've all been... It's, it, it, there's no standard for your flesh. You cannot save yourself. And so this is important that our focus just shifts to the spirit man. Once you eat your foot and something pops out, then you declare that I am clean, I am pure, just like Jesus. No, but you're lying. No, it depends on who you identify yourself to be. Do you identify more with the flesh or do you identify more with the spirit man? Because it's all in you. And so once you can start, even with somebody, if you find them um, uh, doing something that it offends you, like um, I want to use smoking as, a, as, a, as an example, don't judge them. You've got you to love them. You've got to understand that they don't know who they are. That's why the fruits are there. No condemnation if you're smoking in here. <laughs> are, are you with me? So in other words, is the fruits always shows where the focus is. So the, 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 if I, my focus is on the Spirit, then the fruits of the Spirit will pop out, and I will start to walk in the power of God. And then I will start to pray for people, even if I've bumped my toe and something popped out, I can still declare that this is who I am. And if I start to declare that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I keep declaring that, declaring that, declaring that, despite my faults, not to say my fault is, uh, is, is, is um, it's acceptable, but despite my mistake, I declare the truth about who I am. Because once your body is no longer there, once your mind, then you are, your spirit man is one with God. Your spirit man is one with Christ. And so when God, uh, that's what the Bible also says, when you, God, uh, we've got to worship Him in spirit and in truth. How do you do that? It's by focusing on the spirit man because God relates to you via the spirit, not via the body. The body is part of it. And that is why Jesus, through his cross, he provided healing for your body. He did not redeem your body. That's why you're still short if you were short. That's why you're still long if you were long. (laughs) He did not redeem your body. He did not redeem your mind. Your mind's got to get renewed and your body's got to receive the healing, what is in your spirit, man. So the more I declare that by his stripes I'm healed and I start to align uh, my mind with the truth of the word of God and I say I will not walk by what I feel. I'm telling you, I've, so many times I've, I've had this, uh, the pain, uh, I think it was in my back at a time, and I'm like walking while I'm selling cars in business. I'm walking on the, f- I'm, and I'm struggling and I'm like, uh, you lie. Because the Bible says, uh, let God be true and every human being a liar. And it's, it seems crazy to your mind. It's just out of your mind. It's not out of what is possible. And I'm walking and I'm saying like, you're a liar. You're a liar. Like the pain is a lie. And I'm like, by his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. Because that is the truth. So you walk either by feelings, by the carnal, and you'll eat the fruit of that. Or you walk by the spirit. 
and you, 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 you choose despite what you see in the physical and you walk by the Spirit. You declare the Spirit, even if things don't uh, yet go the way you want, want it to go, you still go back to the way of the Spirit because that is who you are. That is the true you. Does that make sense? So in other words, that is why Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6, I want to just give you um, the fact that we so many times have struggles in our marriages, in our finance, in our health, our hope, our joy, our ministry, our relationships, is because we have a knowledge problem. You don't know who you are. We, haven't, we, we think that the Word of God is there for the preacher. No, the Word of God is your shield, it's your sword, it's your protection, it's, your, it's, it's like you, it's your helmet, it's everything, the whole armor. It is understanding what it is and understanding how it functions. The, are, you, are you with me? And it says in Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6, it says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. For the lack of knowledge. I want to go to Genesis 1 verse 26. Genesis 1 26, is, uh, it says there, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Say with me, dominion. Okay, so that means God has given rulership and ownership to the human beings for planet Earth. And that is why in Psalms chapter 8 verse 6 it says, Why have you put all things under the hand of, the ma- uh, under the hand of man? Why have you done this? That is what, that, that's in Psalms chapter 8 verse 6, it's, uh, David's asking that question, why? Why? It's because um, you, can, you can actually see how the world is, and you can see who's the property owner is. Not, not the owner, because the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof is His. God is the actual owner, property owner. But He's given you as the rental agents He's given us. So, so this is important to understand. He's given you, us, the rental agreement, actually. And so therefore, He has also given us His authority, and He's given us His Spirit in us to change people and to change circumstances. And, and, and this is really important. And so he's given us this dominion to rule on earth. That is why it's such a mess. Um, but it's a blessing. I mean, and so we have to understand that your body, God needs your body to function on earth. God needs your body to function on earth. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this again. God needs your body to function on earth. So God, through His Spirit, put inside of you, that is why it says, by His stripes you are healed. He put healing inside of your spirit, man. Why? Because as I renew my mind from inside my spirit, and, and God does miracles, and the Holy Spirit moves, and He heals people, and we have angels present, and it touches people. But I want to also empower you to know that you are not powerless. You're not, you're not waiting for something to happen. It's already happened on the inside of you. You've got to renew your mind to what's already happened on the inside of you. And so once you start to agree with God on who you are and who He made you to be because He's having a relationship with your spirit, you'll start to gradually see yourself moving in, in a complete different level of power. That is why the, Jesus never, He didn't just preach the gospel he ministered healing. He set people free. He cast out devils. He, he raised the dead. Why? Because this is a ministry of, uh, that it has to be a combination of ministry. There has to be power present with the word. The, pow- the, uh, the power and the move of God actually confirms the word. And so with us, it's the same thing I want to ask you this morning, is to become a disciple of Jesus in the sense of where you are starting to take responsibility and say, Lord, Teach me who I really am so that I can do what you said I can do. Because he says, the, uh, the works that I, Jesus said this, the works that I do, greater you will do. Don't raise your hands, but how many of you are doing greater works than Jesus? I'm not going to raise my hand either. Are, are you with me? So Jesus came and he, he, he set a standard, but not for your flesh. He set a standard for your spirit, man. That once you are uh, coming to agreement what's happening in your spirit and the power, the divine supernatural power that is in you, once you come to agreement with that and start to develop in that and grow in that, then you start to see the manifestation coming to your body. It starts to flow to your body. And so that's the same thing. Once you, if, you, if you see a person there with bad fruits, you change the root of the tree. You don't change the fruits. 
And so God comes and the Holy Spirit comes and He changes inside of us. He changes us. And He redeems us. He seals us for the day of redemption. He comes and He does all these amazing things in us. But what is amazing is that He doesn't leave us powerless. He leaves us with His Holy Spirit. The divine power that Jesus Himself walked on earth. I want to just remind you, what was the age of Jesus when He was crucified? How many are you, of you are above 33? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Sometimes we think the older we are, the better we become. We can only listen to old people. And none of you are old. Gotta, you, you're all just maturing. You're just becoming better like a piece of, like a steak. You just become better and better with age. You don't become old. So, so many people believe that old people know so much. No, it doesn't change you. The spirit of the living God was in Jesus at that age and young, and he taught with authority in the temple. And so, don't put it to age, the power of God. Don't give it an excuse. Say, Lord, teach me who I am, and let me renew my mind according to the, what the Word of God says. If you, Lord, say, I am accepted, then I don't seek my acceptance in the world. If you say that I'm beloved, then I don't go and seek people to love me. If you say that I'm chosen, then I don't need people to cho choose me. If you say that I'm ordained, I don't need somebody to ordain me. It's amazing. It sets us free. And you can just be a child of God with all the power of God. I first was in the marketplace all the years. And I get to know the Lord. I've been in so many churches all my life. And before we started even church, we went to the malls and we go and pray for the sick. We pray for the sick because there was assignment sent to me via the word of God. And it's Matthew chapter 10 verse 8. It says they um, give because you freely received. Go heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy. Freely you received, freely give. And so we went, we just grabbed a group of people. We went into the mall on Sunday mornings and we pray for the people. And we seek people that's in crutches. That, it's amazing. What happens to us sometimes is when you see somebody in a crutch, you, you walk this way, you don't want to pray them because you're on the spot. Yes, put yourself on the spot and make mistakes. It's okay. But it's, it's, that's the plain, uh, that's a place of, of growing into it. Amen. But what I want to quickly also share with you here in Genesis chapter 3, um, why... I mentioned that you, God needs your body because a spirit without a body is illegal on earth. A spirit, a spirit without a body is illegal on earth. That is why if you don't have a body, you leave. That is why if you don't have a body, you leave. A spirit without a body is illegal. That is why the serpent in Genesis chapter 3, I want to give you this, that's why the, spur, the, the devil took on the body of a serpent and had this communication and this, this, um, this whole uh, um, chat with, uh, with Eve going on. Because he had to use a body and that is why when you have the Spirit of God in you and you let the Holy Spirit move through you, you have the authority on earth. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> this is better than the Springboks actually trying to... Yes, I mean, but let's not go there. That is amazing. And it gives you authority to speak and change things and, 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 and not be just a victim on earth. It gives you authority. And so the Holy Spirit, being submitted and being open to the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit changes your life. And if you feel that, listen, if you've been born again and you have not been baptized with the Holy Spirit, I really want to encourage you. We'll pray for you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent it to his disciples. He was with his disciples, but yet he sent them to Jerusalem and said, wait for the Holy Spirit to be endued with power. Amazing. He, Jesus was with his Holy Spirit. He equipped them. He, he gave them authority. But he says, go, go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. Because we need the Holy Spirit to function in a supernatural power, supernatural standards of things. 
There was a time in, uh, in our church in Bethlehem, um, we painted, this was this is actually a, 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 such a plain example, but we, I, I've painted, there was a whole piece of wall that we needed to paint, and I'm painting, and I'm painting, and I'm painting, and later on, the guy that's, that's standing with me, he says, when are you going to put your, your, the roller, when are you going to put it back into the, to the paint again? Because this thing just keeps painting, and this thing just keeps painting, and I didn't realize it, but in relationships, sometimes divine things happen around you, and God just divinely increase. If Jesus can change the water to wine, then pain can stay and just keep going on a roller. <laughs> it sounds so simple. But you have a business to run. You have uh, things to manage. You have a household. You have a life to live. And so once we start to trust the supernatural and, and start, to, start to tap into that, we start to trust for more than what is just natural. You don't assess things by the natural. If something screams at you, if you don't have food in your cupboard and it screams at you and it tells you, you go, he has no food, then you tell him, there is food. You keep quiet in Jesus' name. You speak the opposite. You speak the things that you want to see, not the things that you see. Remember, I, I, I mentioned this last week. Speak forth the things. If your child does something naughty, don't tell them they're naughty. Tell them they are awesome. Because once you agree with a lie, you agree, you, you put an identity on them. And later on, you have a naughty child. Sorry, no condemnation. I can't. <laughs> oh, I feel the tension. Amen. And so you speak life. You speak life. You speak life and you speak life and you speak life. You, you, we choose life, not death. Amen. And so in Genesis chapter 3, I'm just... Uh, um, I'm going to keep you to five. It's going to be okay. We have some cuck. Cu no, I'm just joking. In Genesis chapter 3, it's the serpent actually having this whole conversation with, uh, with Eve. And she came and he persuaded Eve and she partook of the apple. What really was interesting to me, and I still don't have an answer yet, is why did Adam not leave Eve to just eat alone and see what happens to her? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know what the Lord said. Why don't you just check if she stays alive or not <laughs> and see what's happening. But what's so crazy is how the enemy came and he says, if you, if you partake this, then you'll become like God. But God actually created them in his image. They were God's. And so the enemy comes and he lies to you and tells you, you've got to become something. That you already are in the Spirit. You're already accepted, already beloved. God's opinion about you can never change because He already established it in your spirit man. He cannot change, He cannot waver because of what your body does. Because Romans 5 8 says, it says While you were a sinner, this means your soul and your body, Christ died for you. Not he redeemed you back so, and He restored your spirit so you can have a relationship with God in spirit. And so once your body does things that it doesn't want to do, don't feel condemned about your body that still keeps with a certain um, uh, old thought or old pattern. Don't be consumed by that because the enemy will keep you consumed with you. And grace always shows us to Jesus that what he has done for me, that he has cleansed me, he has purified me, and I have his purity, I have his faith, I have his um, um, goodness and his righteousness. Amen. And so as well as what I just wanted to mention about the serpent, he, he, he does something which I believe a lot of us are getting challenged with. He said, um, God, uh, you will be like God and these things will still happen to you. Uh, your eyes will open, uh, and you'll see good and evil, and uh, so he's persuading them. And so what happens to us is so many times the enemy lies to us and saying, maybe God doesn't want better for you. Maybe God, maybe you've you, you got to do it yourself, because if you turn to the Lord, maybe he's going to withhold you. But the question is, and, and the enemy made them look, made it look like, like uh, um, God's withholding some good things from them. But actually God supplied all the good things for them. 
And this is, this is, please get this, because um, once you walk out and you have to understand that was God actually trying to protect them or withhold from them? God's protecting them. God protect them. So if it feels to you like something's too slow and you've got to operate in the flesh, I've got to make this work. If I don't do it, nobody's going to do it. See that as a, as a red light. See that as a red light. And I know the flesh. I, I, I also um, work with, with them. You are not your flesh. You have a flesh. You are not your flesh because it's not your identity. It's not who you are in Christ. You have one. And the flesh will tell you, but, but look, the whole world, and the world will paint a picture. You've got to be this man, or you've got to be this wife. And if you don't come uh, uh, like the standard, uh, I don't want to use that as scripture as an illustration. If you don't, don't do the standard, if you don't look like this, then you are less. That's a lie. Is there anybody that's not married? He's an awesome dad. He's an awesome husband. Awesome husband. Why? Because God doesn't see you for your body's performance. God sees you for who He made you in the Spirit. And He says that you are good enough, you are worthy enough, and your worth can never change. Does that make sense? And Jesus, don't die for something that's invaluable. When Jesus died, He established your value on the cross. And what makes you valuable, and I'm going to use this illustration again, I drove in, uh, in, the, in the street a long time ago in Bethlehem, and I saw this poster on the wall of a cat, and the owner said, 5,000 reward if you find the cat, and I'm like, Lord, this is an expensive cat. <laughs> in the meantime, I come to know that you get actually more expensive cats, but anyway, I said, but you can go to the SPCA and get one for free. And the Lord spoke to my heart and said, what made this cat so expensive is that the owner is willing to pay that amount. And so you, based upon your feelings, cannot change. And that is why Jesus established your value and your worth, this side. He established that because he paid his blood. God gave his only son an established value. He died for, he would have never died if he weren't worth it. He died because you were worth it. We think he just died because he had to clean us from our sins. Yes, he got to dealt with that because he's a holy God. But once he cleansed that, he purified your spirit so that he can have constant communication with your, holy, with your spirit. And it doesn't stop. And it doesn't stop. It's when our focus shifts to the flesh, then sometimes we struggle to hear his voice because now suddenly we want to function in the flesh. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit, you're preaching good. Amen. <laughs> Once you are saved, you are always saved. Once you are saved, you are always saved. You cannot become unsaved unless you reject Jesus. You, and you cannot become unsaved unless you completely reject Jesus. But I think you've got to go a far away in that area. I don't know how far you're going to have to push to get to be unsaved. But once you are saved, your spirit man gets sealed. And so a lot of people still live in their old mindsets. And the old mindsets causes the body to function in old ways, old habits. And then they think when they're going to die, the spirit is going to go to hell. No, it can't. Because you can't unseal it. Ouch of Aina. It's only when you reject Jesus that this, something can happen there. But you got, I don't, I've never been there. And I, even if you go quite far, I, I, God will do everything to get to you. God will do everything to restore relationship to you. This is amazing. This is amazing. What this actually does, why this is important, it, it, it just shows that I can always be in constant communication with God. He loves me, he loves me. He doesn't have those flowers. He loves me, he loves me not, he loves me, he loves me not. He doesn't have them. He has only, the, he loves me, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and I can never stop loving you because I loved you before you done anything. 
I loved you before you existed. I loved you. I loved you. I loved you. And one, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, ask the Lord when it's time, I'll minister on the Old Covenant and how things will function. But if you look at the first few books in the Old Covenant, God just loved them and loved them and loved them and oversaw their sin, oversaw their things, they didn't put their sin against their account. He just loved on them, loved them, and then He brought in the law. And the law was there. The law was actually to bring condemnation, and the law was actually like an electric wire. If you touch it, you get shocked. Was it God's will to put it there? No, He had to put it there. Because the people were so crazy that if God didn't bring in the law, there would have not been a virgin for Jesus to come back and save us. I'm going to send you home to think about something. If Jesus, if God didn't bring the law, because based on the law, then, then people, if they touched the wire, they were dead. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. But the law started to wake people up to, to, to be afraid of God. And that's why they, the fear kept them in, in, in a sense, but they still went off, and God still sent prophets to get them back, and then the Lord, and people were crazy, crazy, not him. That is why he says in Deuteronomy, he says, choose life, today I put before you death and life, but choose life, choose life. And so, in this sense, what I want to come back to is that in your spirit, man, God has redeemed you back. There's a new covenant. God don't deal with us on the basis of the old covenant and how people he had dealt with them. We've got to learn from the old covenant not to do the same things because your body is important for people to see Jesus in you. That is why the body, that is why you've got to believe this side, how pure you are, so that the purity and the faith and the belief that you are so pure can come and manifest in, your, manifest in your body so you can live a pure and holy lifestyle so people can be attracted to Jesus in you. Uh, I don't know, hallelujah. Are you all okay? But I want to ask you not to focus on the flesh. Focus on who you are in the spirit. I'm going to leave you with this, and I'm really finishing off now. It's 1 Peter 1 verse 23. It sings, We are being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which live and abide forever. This is amazing. I, I couldn't always establish, if, uh, if you are sleeping, I need you to be awake right now. But if you, I couldn't always understand exactly how this applies, but it is, you are born again. This, this spirit man of you, you really are, the true you, are born again of incorruptible seed. This is amazing. So no matter what happens on the body, on the mind, this cannot be corrupted. No matter what happens here, you cannot change here because you have been born again with incorruptible seed. God cannot deny you because you are one with Christ. You are seated with Him in heavenly places. He cannot push you out of Christ. Because of your deeds. Does that make sense? Because He didn't put you in Christ because of your deeds. He put you inside of Jesus because of Jesus' deeds on the cross. And so incorruptible means my value cannot change, my worth cannot change. None of what God said about me can change because of what I feel, what people say, what people think, what the world tries to uh, um, push on you. It can never change. I'm an awesome dad. I, I'm an awesome son of God. I am chosen. I'm beloved. I am holy. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm loved. He, I'm the apple of his eye. I'm blessed. I'm anointed. I'm highly favored. I'm deeply loved. And it can never change because it's not corruptible. <laughs> it's incorruptible because it's him that rebirthed you. Amen. Let's just close our eyes. I want you to just stand with me.
And let's just honor the Lord. Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for your revelation, for your truth. It's not mine, it's yours, Lord. We thank you for, for um, just a new man that we can be because of you, Jesus. We thank you that we have been born again of incorruptible seed. And we thank you that we can have this amazing relationship and grow in relationship with you. Uh, and we just thank you that it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And we, we love you, Lord, because you first loved us. Because you first loved us and we thank you. I just pray. I just pray for people, Lord, that, um, that you will baptize them with your love. And as we stand here, we're going to pray for people that you will just baptize people with your love. And those who, who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to just pray for you. Father, we thank you so much, Holy Spirit, that you just minister to people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for today. We just bless your church in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for everybody that you know their hearts, you know their needs. And Lord, thank you that which you have, um, the word that you released, thank you that we are growing into it. Uh, we are growing into more revelation of who you are and who we are in Christ. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.